I, I, I'm meaning to ask you, um, how did you come, like the world does not deserve, like the world does not um, require you. What does that title mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, how did you come to that? Yeah, you know, I think um, how I came to that um, was I was, I was I was listening to NPR one day, it was a weekend edition, and I wish I could find the interview, but I, I, I'll never find it. Um, there was a musician on, I, I don't listen to that type of music, so I don't, um, I, you know, I was, I was more interested in it just because it was an interesting interview. Um, and um, he, he had apparently been part of a band. And so it comes to the end of the interview and the interviewer is kind of like, you know, I feel like she was asking a question that she wanted to ask for the entire interview, almost like she wasn't really listening to anything, just wait to get to that moment where she could say, so when are you getting back with your band? You know, he comes quiet for a little bit. Then he's like, you know, it's just not, the world doesn't require that. That's just not something the world needs. You know, mm -hmm. so, and it's kind of like, I'm doing what I'm doing right now. And I started thinking about that. I started thinking about, yeah, you know, I, 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 my focus was on music at that moment. I started thinking, yeah, Outkast is making terrible music. I think Idlewild had just come out. Outkast is making terrible music right now. Um, but I, you know, if they never make another good album, then, and, and I haven't made an album since, but if they have if they never made another good album, what they had is, is, is good enough. And Wu-Tang never made another good album. What they had is enough. And I started extrapolating it out. And I started thinking, you know, Stevie Wonder, Bob Marley, they are, um, they are, they are important to my life, right? Uh, to a lot of people's lives. Uh, if they never existed, we wouldn't know. <laughs> and then I started thinking about all kinds of other things. Um, and I was thinking that each, each individual one of us um, is, um, is, is, uh, is, is not, is not essential. And we have to sort of think about ourselves as, um, as, as part of a continuum and it's sort of a freeing, freeing notion that, um, that we're not the most important thing. And, you know, we're the most important thing going in, in ourselves, you know, you know, if, 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 if you have a pain, everything stops, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, um, but it's not that, but it's, um, but the world doesn't stop. The world keeps going, um, and um, and I and I think that it's it's a it's a to me it's a it's a freeing it's a freeing notion to really think about that, um, you know, to really you know to to really think of yourself as as you know just one you know one tiny blade of grass and not not the lawn, you know. Yeah, and 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 it, and it connects back to the concept of empathy because once you're able to to realize that you know what I. I, I, I'm just a part of this tapestry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, right. uh -huh. I, am, I am not, I'm not the pitcher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm a, uh -huh. then, it, then I think that that does help, you know, enable or allow you to, to consider people who exist outside of you, who exist mm. outside of your experience, who exist outside of your sensibility and be able to be like, you know what? Yeah, just because a thing is good for me or just because a thing is bad for me, doesn't mean it was be good or bad for someone else. Um, there's there's a moment in in the book where one of the characters is having a lap dance and it becomes a, like a psychedelic experience, and and he hears a voice that tells him, "You're the most important person that ever existed, but everybody else is also the most important person that ever existed." And I think that that's kind of the essence of 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 all, well, not the essence of the book, but one of the essences of the book. Yeah, I yeah. The, the the psychology behind that and that sort of psychedelic experience, I think I, I I've been I, I've been reluctant to admit this out loud, <laughs> but since you went there first, I will. Uh, is that you know we none of us have really any evidence that the world exists outside of us. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, we have belief that it does, but for all for all I know, the world could end as soon as I close. Like when I go to sleep and close my eyes, that's it. That that the world, that everything that exists is completely self-contained. It's completely contained within me. And and you can right. say and you can probably say the same thing uh -huh. because you don't know what ex I mean. You're you're told what existed before you existed, and mm. you assume that existence will continue. When you're gone, right? You are not. <laughs> I mean, there's no way of being completely one thousand percent sure of that. No. Okay. Um, 
where and that and that puts us in the same position as uh, like my 19 month old son where yeah he he still he that's what he still believes that the world that the world revolves around him that the world mm-hmm. lives around him and and we get older and we get more context and we get more experience and more education that tells us oh that's not true but you we have to trust that experience that contest and that education because again you know when i when i when i when i close my eyes if i close my eyes and close my ears the world stops existing <laughs> okay. well i mean it, it's and, and 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 then you know how you treat other people it becomes a choice you know um you mm-hmm. could do you with that information you could take that information and say i can be a shitty to anybody um as as, as i want because they don't really exist you know um mm-hmm. and you know that might be a short life um but it, it's, a, it's a choice you can make um but then uh we can take that other, other information and say on on faith i believe these other people actually do exist in the world actually doesn't exist i've i've never been to china but i'm assuming china exists um and um and and then you know it's a it's a it's, it's, it's a choice each, each and every one of us has to make every single every single moment <laughs> because um like you said there's no there is there's no guarantee of of uh, of of anything um there's no there's no way you can actually guarantee and prove it so you have to really act on act on faith yeah you have to act on faith you have to you have to believe um and and again that faith and that belief you know in other people in in the possibility of other yeah. possibilities that's 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 where that empathy happens and i think you know i keep coming back to this concept of empathy because that's where the best work comes from. Like I, I, I think that the best work, that your work, and we're you know we talk about KSA, even like Samantha Irby, um, um, Monty Perry, Brittany Cooper. I mean, I, and I'm thinking of just people I know who are just writing this tremendous work right now, Bossy Ecby, and it comes mm-hmm. from it comes from empathy. It comes yeah. from it comes from you know, trying to find that grace for themselves, yeah. right? And also recognizing that there's an entire world that exists outside of you. Like you can't, like you just, I don't even know how you can work, how you can write without that recognition, you know? And, and, and there are people who do that. I mean, fucking Donald Trump's sons have books, but you can't <laughs> write, you can't write a good book. Yeah. Without, without being deeply empathetic um, or, yeah. or at least without making the effort. And remember, perhaps the book is about the effort, but an empathy yeah, has, I, to be, has to be a part of it in some capacity. I, mean, I think that comes back to what you said earlier about going, criticizing yourself, being more critical of yourself than, than anyone else, right? Because you really have mm-hmm. to think about, you know, how, you know, how you, uh, have have harmed other people in in these situations, and how you, um, uh, you know your your role in things. You know, <laughs> you know you got you know your essays about you know how how you how you and your wife you know got together, um, and um, you know I, I think you're incredibly you know critical you know of uh, of you know certain of certain things. I don't, don't want to give it away for the reader, um, but. Um, I, you know, I, it, you know, it's a, it, it's a, it, it's a, it's an, it's an act of empathy to say that, you know, I, I, you know, I fucked up in this situation, um, um, but I'm gonna continue, you know, but this is how I have to move forward, even though I fucked up, you know. Um, I mean, it's it's an act of empathy, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit more cynical, <laughs> too, just about myself, but it's, 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 yes, it's a sincere act of empathy. But, but it also makes for a more compelling read. <laughs> it, it, it also, like the functionality part of it matters. Um, and and I and I ask myself, would I be, would I would I would I would I be as empathetic? Would I would I be as vulnerable if there wasn't a, a tangible validation <laughs> in it? Mm-hmm. I, you know, it make it, yes, I, I want to be a better person, obviously, but 
do I still have that same compulsion to be a better person if I also didn't know that being a better person was going to make me a better writer too? Does, does it does you know because I, I i i don't think i mean we're we're incentive driven entities humans are and and so what is my incentive for for you know for being vulnerable for examining this way for developing empathy you know and i i want to tell myself that, oh yeah, I'm just doing this because it's the right thing. And it's, it, you know, I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart, but I, 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 I can't, I can't go, I can't go this far than just stop right there. It's like, okay, if I'm going to really try to be as self-aware and as vulnerable as, as I can be, then I need to go a little bit further. It's like, okay, why does this empathy exist? And that, and you know, the piece, that I wrote recently that you referenced um, the VSB piece about um, I'm not brave kind of touches on that. Mm. Or it's, you know, it, it's not a coincidence that my work has gotten progressively more vulnerable, more transparent and all of that as I've gotten more success. And, 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 and all these other, you know, physical and, and metaphysical validations that exists. And, and I feel like, okay, brave is writing the same way when I am 26 and still, you know, and still have like, my, my income is very tenuous. My living situation is tenuous. My dating life is like, is awkward and weird. And so if I were to write with that vulnerability and, and exist and live with that vulnerability, then instead of still performing this, you know, hyper hetero masculinity that I, you know, that I sold, I sold a book with that title. Um, my agent loved it. My editor, Denise Oswald and my agent, Tanya McKinnon, you know, they both loved it. Denise is white and she's my editor at, um, at Echo. Um, but I guess Denise spoke to her people at Barnes and Noble and her people at Amazon and all the, you know, the major booksellers who are like, yeah, we can't wait for Damon's book. We're excited to have it, we're excited to promote it, but yeah, um, about that title. I don't know how banner ads with nigga <laughs> in 72. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the 70s, there were movies with that title all, all over yeah, Times yeah. Square. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know that's gonna look. So, uh, and, she, and she was like, you know, you. If you want to keep it, you can, but I'm just letting you know. Mm. And so I made a decision to, um, to to change it to something. And, and I think that what doesn't kill you makes you blacker is a more fitting, is a more fitting title. Um, and that came to me while I was doing some edits. I was. Um, I agree. I think it's a better title. Yeah, yeah, and they, and there was. I have to admit, too, not just for was, marketability, not just for marketability. Also, I think it's a book there was also a bit of a troll trollishness with me choosing Nigga Neurosis because I like envisioned I always had, had this fantasy in my head of like white people struggling with it and me being entertained by it like it was always like I would be on like CNN and like Anderson Cooper Anderson Cooper is like so um your book uh, n- ninja nin- can I say ninja n- ninja neurosis can you tell me about your how- in work, I just I had that fantasy in my head. I wanted to recreate that, so it was a bit of that title was a bit of a troll. I have a story in my book called "The Nigga Knockers," and and that happens a lot. Um, and I, I it entertains me. Um, <laughs> hey, I, 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 yeah, I'm entertained by how white people engage with that word. I am when when when, when white people are, are trying to figure out how to say it. And I'm not giving in, uh, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm not gonna give you any help. I'm, you're just gonna. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna sit here and let you figure it out on your own how to how to say this. <laughs> so go ahead. Go ahead. 